I'd like to welcome everyone to the July 24th, 2013 meeting. I'm sorry, it's July 25th. <laughs> I got the wrong thing in front of me. Of the uh, Community Television Board of Directors. Can I have a roll call, please? Uh, Keith Gudger. Here. Nathan Benjamin. Present. James Fisher. Here. Tess Fitzgerald. Joe Hall. Here. Karen Machado. Present. Jennifer Pittman. Here. Matilda Rand. Here. Lou Tawasto. Here. Adam Wade. What about Dory Stein? Dory's out today. Oh, Dory Stein. Sorry, thank you. Okay. Uh, I would like to open it up to oral communications where anyone can address the board on any item that is not on the agenda. Is there anyone who would like to address the board at this point? Hello, everyone. Uh, Ron Holman, a longtime volunteer at Community Television, but also a staff member, uh, full disclosure. So, uh, yeah, this is a real bittersweet moment for me. It's uh, public knowledge now. Next Friday will be my last day as core staff. Um, still going to be involved. You're not going to get rid of me that easily. Good. I'll still be coming to board member uh, meetings and participating in uh, as many ways as I can. Um, if you just indulge me a, a little bit, I know I only have three minutes, and I'll try and be brief, but I, I'd like to share with you <clears throat> how I, I started off as an intern out at KRUZ and was a volunteer for community television when they very first started in 1994. And then I managed to uh, become staff and I've over the years been a, a volunteer producer and helped with shows and things like that. So I, th I think I have a, uh, well, I, I know I am basically the, the uh, CTV historian. I know where all the dead bodies are buried, so. Um, but anyway, I, I want to address the, uh, not the past, but, but the future. And we really are at a critical state. You, you know, we, we really need to go through a lot of changes. And I, I hope that you remember, I've been advocating for a lot of these changes for a long time. And uh, I hope that I don't seem like I'm trying to hold on to the past. Uh, because I, I know that that model's dead. We need to move forward. We need to make a lot of changes. And I think a lot of those changes are, are positive. I'd like to let you know that the server over at the county building is being loaded right now as we speak with a lot of files with shows from Keith and Matilda and other people. And that's going to be a major step forward where we will be able to have producers ingest their own material. And which the biggest headache about that is the, all the different formats we get and having to make sure everything conforms to what the server needs. This is all going to be automated. This is super. This is really good. Um, there's a lot of other changes that I'm not as clear about and uh, quite uncomfortable with, with some things. And it, it's really, um, once again, I, I don't, I have no illusions that we do need to change. But I think we need to be really careful about how we change. I, I read once about. <clears throat> You know, the, the discussion goes on in public access circles a lot about what do you do to survive? How far do you change your model? And one thing that I read once was somebody used the public library as an analogy. That what would happen if the library started charging to check out books? You know, and that, that's not so far flung with the finances and things like that. But when you think about it, it's like, at what point are you no longer the institution that you set out to be? If too many of these changes happen. So anyway, I, I just want to wish you the best of luck and try and kind of get you uh, pepped up or something about you know paying very careful attention to all the changes coming, because it's going to be fast and furious. And, and we need to adapt quickly. And, but we also, the, the board really needs to pay attention 
And I, I do have a lot of personal concerns. I think it would be a lot more constructive for me to have that conversation with you offline. So um, I won't be as encumbered <laughs> in another week. And I would love to talk to you all personally about where I think the, the future uh, lies and, and the strengths and weaknesses of the transition that we're, that we're looking at. So um, that's my long rambling swan song, kind of. But remember, I'm, I'm only changing roles. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not leaving. I still will, will be involved. So I want to thank you for all your efforts to keep this place alive and viable. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Ron, so, Ron, don't you, go away. Could you step over here for a second? <laughs> this board wants to heartily thank you for your years of service. Absolutely. Beyond the call of duty. <laughs> Above and okay. beyond. And I personally want to thank you, Ron. I didn't know anything when I got here, and I know a lot more than I did. I actually could actually put my camera away now because I've learned a little bit more. Okay. I, I do appreciate your historical perspective. It's been very helpful to me. I know it's been very helpful to our board. Mm -hmm. um, we wish you the very best of luck, and thank, thank you so you. very much. Thank you very much. Right. Is there anyone else that would like to address the board on an issue not on the agenda? OK, we'll move on to the, um, is there any Consideration for late additions to the agenda, additions or deletions to the consent or regular agenda. No? Okay. Then we have before us the consent agenda, which includes the budget and the, some changes to the personnel manual. The budget, um, would you like to speak to the Finance Committee, Joe? Well, yes, we uh, had a finance committee meeting prior to this. We went through the budget, and it contains a number of changes. One, a number of positions have, uh, are no longer on community TVs. Uh, there are some changes in terms of a contract addition for Rodney Dunbar, which is on the agenda to talk about later. And generally, it's about 9% less per the county uh, directions than it was before. It's starting to transition into the post difficult period. So the Finance Committee did recommend uh, to the full board that the budget be adopted for fiscal year 2013-2014. And with that, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. If somebody wants to talk about any of the other things, I welcome a second with the discussion. I would like to at least mention the Personnel Committee meeting before we take that motion. Is that OK with you, Joe? Fine. Okay. So the Personnel Committee meeting also met yesterday and made a few changes to the original document that you received, and hopefully you all received the changed document that uh, the media service, uh, media, let me get the title correctly. Media service coordinator. Media services service coordinator. coordinator. <laughs> okay. So now, I would gladly accept your motion. Okay. Somebody want to second it? Second. Now we have a motion and a second. Uh, before I bring it back to the board, is there any discussion from the audience? Okay, is there any further discussion from the board? Seeing none, I'd like to call the vote. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Seeing none, we'll go on to the first item on the agenda. The first item on the agenda is the board retreat for August 3rd at 9 a.m. Uh, Personnel committee? Pardon? Personnel committee? Are we going to vote on that one? No, that was the consent agenda. We, we wrapped it all up. Oh, it, we wrapped <laughs> it on it. Okay. That was the consent agenda, and yeah, we, we, we just, voted. We just bundled. Had to clarify. And the bundled. minutes, too, I'm assuming? Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Um, and you should have, all the board should have received the agenda that uh, I sent out. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's a public document. Um, I don't know that we don't really need any action, I don't think. We decided to have this retreat last time. And uh, so is there any discussion from the audience? Any discussion on the board? I, I think we confirmed it's going to start at 9 and go to about 12. Is that what we decided? Yeah. And I believe Adam and I, Adam will be there and I won't be there. Because he's on vacation, I'll be on vacation. OK. And what about? 
and the, the preparation for it. Are you just discussing that? Um, I'd be happy to appoint you to do the preparations, but well, I was, I was had, had a few comments about yeah, yes, about the board meeting. Yeah, I mean about the board retreat. retreat. I, I'm looking to find a facilitator. Uh, I've made a couple of attempts, and I've got one I've got to call into right now. But we hope to have a facilitator by next week. Um, but that's the only comment I wanted to make is that we're looking for a facilitator. Okay. And I understand from what you send is that you'd like us to prepare for some of the items on the agenda. So that That's right. I will be sending out homework <laughs> to the board, okay. and I'm, I'm hoping that this board will do the homework and come prepared to the meeting, make it very productive. Thank That's you. Right. Because basically it would mean that we can do it in three hours. Otherwise, if we need, if we need, uh, if we need to read everything at the board, retreat, it would take longer, so it would help. Because some of us have something in the afternoon and would like to make sure we can fulfill our uh, other obligations. I'll just mention really quick that during the executive director report that Lynn will be giving, I'll be mentioning um, and handing out a few things for you to take home as homework this evening that you can look at and we'll be having a discussion about during the retreat. Great. Okay. If we're through with that item, then I'd like to move on. It was the Romney Dunbar contract was on the agenda, but the contract is not ready. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. It's it's not ready. Uh, the county originally, when we started down this road, I, it was our impression the county might be doing the contract, and we'd just be looking at it in terms of what how it fit for CTV. Um, it's much clearer to me now that the county wants us to do the contract. I'll be working on it for the next couple of days. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you have something out um, for review for Keith and Kathy to take a look at, and then um, back to the county for them to take a look at, and then eventually to our attorney, and then back to this board. Um, so that's where we are with the contract. There is no contract at this point, but I'm going to give it the first uh, shot and see where it goes from there. I think we need to move this on, and the way to do it is to get a draft contract and get that process started. So I'll do that this weekend. Okay. And then the, the last item on the agenda was the Santa Cruz County Board of Supervisors meeting for August 27th. This is a cleanup meeting for the Board of Supervisors. As you know, we do have the one-year contract. We've signed that. Uh, we're waiting for all the other signatures to get done, but it, it's out. Um, um, they gave us the budget we requested, and then since that budget, of course, you heard this morning, uh, this afternoon, that we had some additional financial. Um, issues, the, the Dunbar contract, some carryover from last fiscal year the county couldn't accomplish. We put that in our budget, and so the cleanup will be for the county to put that money back into our budget on August 27th. It's basically a cleanup meeting for the Board of Supervisors. Okay. And you don't need any action from us for that? No. The only thing that we'll need action about is to bring back to the Board an emergency session, I'm assuming, is to review the contract with the Dunbar so that when we go to the 27th, that's part of our cleanup. We'll also have the, well, we'll also have the, hopefully, have the CMAP CTV contract done. That will also be part of that Board letter that will go to them for the 27th. When, when, is there, when is the deadline to get it on the Board agenda? That would set. It's early August. I think it's the 9th, if I recall. I, I've got it on my calendar. I'm sorry I don't have it with me, but we've got to get it done quickly. So that's why so I'm going to try and get So this. then you'd have to have a Board meeting or I, with their board. Well, we've already had an agreement on the CTV CMAP contract, yeah, but right. but the, for the Dunbar contract, we'd have to have an emergency meeting prior to that so we could take it to the board. Other, uh, otherwise, this board doesn't get to see it before we go to the Board of Supervisors. So, yes, that's exactly right. I would like to take the pulse of our board. We could do that as an emergency meeting with a full quorum of the board, or we could designate a smaller amount of the board to agree to that contract if we want it. What would be your, is there an opinion? I then, don't see who's, I'm not going to be here right. to have it by then, so that answers, I'm not part of it. Well, we do have an escape hatch in our bylaws that, that we could form the executive committee to mm -hmm. vote on this, um, but I just wondered if we wanted to explicitly state that and vote on that, or, or what's your feeling? Can, can we leave it open? Do we have the option of doing either we, or? We currently have the option. I just yes. wanted to bring it up so, yes. we could, so that we all, the board, knew right. what's, 
what's the likelihood of things happening? I, I'm fine with the executive committee meeting and okay. deciding. So that. we'll just we can follow the bylaws on that as well. I, I remain somewhat unclear about the the parameters of the the Dunbar contract, and I remain curious about that. And I would encourage the board to be involved in that discussion as a board. Okay. When when do we expect? When might we expect to have an emergency board meeting? I'm going to be working on what, you know, part of this, I'm not 100% clear, but, but I'll be working on the deliverables and the contract itself so that we have something we can work from. Uh, I don't anticipate that I'll be able to do it all, and we always refer this to our own um, outside attorney, but, right. but I'd like to have something to get the movement going, and I think the way to do it is to, to have a contract that Keith and Kathy take a look at, then we send it to the county for them to review because this is something they're actively engaged in. And then at the point that we have agreement from all those, then we would take it to our attorney for agreement and then get it to this board. That would be my hope. Estimated time, date, date. Mm -hmm. Within the next two weeks. Honestly. Within the next two weeks because we've got to have it ready for the board. No, that's fine. That's good. Could, could, no. could they possibly have some flexibility and we just schedule a meeting on the 14th of August? That's, that's past the date. That's a date. Well, after well the remember, we can always slip into a board packet a, a what, what I call a, a document that says this is a Dunbar contract. We can pull that prior to the board meeting and insert the actual contract. So the 14th isn't horrible. It's not optimal, but it's, but it's doable. But just listening to all the conversations, mm -hmm. I think it's going to take you a while, and I'd rather yes. you have the time yeah, to do it. Yeah, we don't want to rush you. And I mean, I'm just throwing this out as a date, not because I'm going to be here, but just <laughs> I started counting the weeks that were going on. You go here, you go there, people go on vacation. Mm -hmm. I think if you can get it done by the 14th, that's only three weeks from now. So that's well, I'll, I'll have it done by the yeah. my hope is to have it done before that. Well, those are my thoughts. Well, the, the 15th is a Thursday. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah I, I can. I'm just not clear why we would want to review something after the county has already gotten it. Why we wouldn't want to have some discussion about Well, because that I that think the county has to be actively engaged in this. This is something the county requested, um, and, and without their input, we could do any kind of contract. But it goes to the county. It's $80,000 80, that goes to the county board of supervisors. My preference would be to have their input early on. If there's something this board doesn't agree with or doesn't, doesn't feel fits, that's something this board can discuss. But to do it after the fact, it doesn't make sense to me. It makes much more sense to get their input early on mm -hmm. and then to take a look at what that looks like uh, for this board to make a decision. You did understand that Lynn said it would sort of as a placeholder go on right. the supervisor so packet so and then we could, and it, it, we could still change it. Mm -hmm. So if we meet on the 15th, that's okay. The 14th, the 14th is good. The 15th is not good. Okay. Yeah, I, I won't be here either. It makes a lot of people you can schedule it whenever you want. Right. So I would like to leave it. We'll, we'll schedule that meeting. Yeah, we decide. Before the 15th. Okay. Keith, is it possible that maybe, Lynn, you might be able to shine some light on the funding of uh, the NBAR uh, contract and how that might be implemented and how it's so important that the county be involved in that uh, and what our play in that is as well as what theirs is so that I think just the general populace has an idea where we're going with that, because that's a chunk of change that's being spent. Well, you're talking about how it's financed? It's financed through the, um, uh, through the reserves of the peg fees that the county has. That's how it's being financed. Um, if you're asking me to get much more detailed about what the contract is, I can't tell you, because I'm just now starting to take a look at it. Kathy and I have both spent time with Romney Dunbar and the county, and I think I've got an idea, uh, but um, it might fall far short of what the county had intended. I don't know. But it's, it's essentially asking him to produce a certain amount of uh, material? Or There'll have to be deliverables. We're not sending a content that doesn't have deliverables. I'm just not clear on what those deliverables are and how that affects CTV. Um, I think I've got some idea. <clears throat> um, but, but if somebody asked me to put it in writing today, I couldn't do it. I'll spend time over the next couple of days trying to fashion what that looks like from the input I've received already from, uh, from Kathy, from, from the county, and from uh, Dunbar. Romney Dunbar. Okay. So we're through with that item. I would <laughs> I think we're so leaving we'll leave, it we'll ambiguous. Leave the, yeah, we'll leave the meeting date open. Well, you know, the, any, any board 
member can call a special meeting. So. Well, I, I think it would be good. I agree with you. I think everybody should look at it just so yes. it started out with a mm -hmm. common knowledge of what's going on. So yeah. whenever you find it's time to do it, do it. See who's here. Am I correct, though, in the <laughs> basic understanding of the architecture is the county supplying these funds or okaying funds, and therefore the county puts certain strings attached to that or certain requirements attached to that and that's what you're talking about getting their input early on because that establishes at least some parameters for for what this contract what this agreement has to be and then within those parameters i agree it should be this board as a whole that discusses the particulars within whatever parameters the county is attached to that money that's right that's that was my point thank you thanks for clarification good summation <laughs> Okay. Yes, sir. So the next item on the agenda is the oral report from the board chair regarding the telethon and fundraising efforts. And as you know, we had our first ever telethon. It was nine hours, three hours, the 28th, 29th, and 30th of June. A number of the board members were here. A lot, a lot of members and volunteers came in and helped. It was really a good member experience. We, between the the letter to members and the asks of, of members and volunteers and people in the community and the telethon, we raised $10,030. Yeah, that's great. Excellent. And our original budget item had been 9000 And I think we also came in less than our expenses that were budgeted to, yes. Amanda? Yes. So we Success. did, it was very good. We did a great job. Thanks for your work on that. Yes. Yes. That was super. <laughs> Thanks to everybody. Thanks everybody did a great job and was very helpful. I mean, everybody pitched in. It was really nice. I appreciate that. Um, and as you know, last time at our board meeting, um, Paul McNabb is now on staff and doing the development director job, working with Kathy. Uh, he's, he was here just a minute ago. <laughs> he's working nice long hours. Oh, he's here. There he is. He's hiding back there. <laughs> so we know Paul is working hard. and. We look forward to uh, what's going to come of that. So, any other items? Uh, we, um, what happened to the, um, yeah, what happened to the executive director report? Let's have that now. That's, that's supposed well, to be. Well, we, we've discussed Dunbar, so I'll take that off my list of discussions. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the other one I wanted to let you know is where we are with the CMAP CTV contract. There's been a number of um, changes in the contract and sent back and forth. Kathy, it's been now with CMAP, and Kathy indicates to me that that should be coming back to us soon. I think we're awfully close. Um, I think we're squeaky close. Uh, but uh, that's where we are with the CMAP CTV contract. We do have two current, well, we have one previous contract we had with CMAP CTV, and we have a, actually a current contract. Um, our current contract says on the face that ended in June 31st, but it has some deliverables in July. Our attorney is aware of this. Their attorney is aware of this. We're going to be fixing that along with the signing of this new contract. It's just amending that one to actually say July 31st, but we have to ensure that we don't have double funding, so that's why we're having to look at it. But I just want to make the board aware of it. Our attorneys are both aware of it. It was, a, it was actually a typo. It should have said July 31st. Um, so that's where we are with the CMAP CTV uh, contract. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, as I always say, while all this goes on, staff continue to do the hard and heavy lifting. Um, and lately we've seen our staff doing that, but we've also had CMAP staff over here helping and, and rolling up their sleeves. And it, um, it gets the day-to-day -day operational stuff down. So I never want to forget that while we have these conversations about the big stuff, the important stuff is getting done daily by the staff. And I, I, I always feel like I need to say that. If I don't, then it mm -hmm. kind of tends to get overlooked. So I just want to say that. And with that, I'll turn it over to Kathy. She has a number of things she'd like to discuss. Thanks, Lynn. Um, well, it's nice to be here. Well, thank um, you for being here. It's been really wonderful. I've been working much more closely with uh, Keith, which has been great, and other board members. So thank you all for your time. Um, I'm really excited. This week has been a really wonderful week in particular. Uh, it's been three weeks that I've been focusing actually quite a bit more than half my time over here as it's turned out, um, and much uh, gratitude to my board for allowing me to do that. I think in the initial phases of this transition, uh, we, we need a lot of my time here, so I've been spending quite a bit of time over here. Uh, we've had really some, some changes, some really minor changes, but I think they are worth 
mentioning. So first of all, I want to, uh, this is a big one actually. We have a new media services coordinator that will be starting on, uh, I need the mic closer to me. I should know that. Um, we have a new uh, media services coordinator that we would like to welcome to the team here at CTV, and that is uh, Victor Herman, who has been working in, as our uh, part-time access facilitator back in Craig Up, and also has been at the city of Watsonville as their staff person uh, running all of their government meetings and their channels. So he'll be starting with us on August 1st. So we're very excited to be able to hire internally for that position and to move him into uh, this new media services position. We also have hired at CMAP recently for that position and for the last uh, month have Josh Young who came to us from KMVT and Create TV and has been working with us as well at CMAP. I just also wanna mention a little bit about some of the work that's been going on at the county, we have installed a new server there. So we have a brand new Teleview server that the county has purchased on behalf of CTV. And our IT director that also is sharing his time with CTV and CMAP, Nick Brandt, has been working rather furiously there to get everything installed in time for the cutover date. So we'll be cutting over from the old broadcast server to the new broadcast server. And what we've found at CMAP with our broadcast server transition that happened about two and a half months ago is that we have been able to create quite a few staffing efficiencies and also just efficiencies in our workflow. And one of the things that Ron alluded to is, is becoming a reality and we're very excited about that. We've been following the Denver Open Media model for a number of years now and at CMAP have Im implemented a few of their techniques for creating efficiencies and allowing members to really do a lot more at the center, which is exciting. We, we kind of think of it as a DIY model for community media because that's really what our funding re realities are requiring of us. So to that end, um, Nick Brandt, our IT director, has also set up a system on the new server that will allow members to ingest their own content and schedule their own programs on the broadcast server and we have a, a super users group that are meeting and Keith and Matilda are, are leading the charge on that and we'll be training them in the next several weeks so we're very excited about that and then they'll be training other members as well on how to do this scheduling themselves so those are some of the big changes that are happening um, this week was really exciting because we have had a number of joint meetings between CMAP and CTV personnel that I think have been really exciting for both organizations and very productive. We had a productions team joint meeting this week and we also had a leadership management team meeting this week and a number of positive outcomes and also just learning how the other ones work and what kinds of workflows everybody's dealing with and how we deal with productions. We've got a number of your team at CTV coming over to help with our Gilroy Garlic Festival, which starts at eight o'clock tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be out there for three days, 12 to 15 hour days. If any of you would like to volunteer, <laughs> there are still opportunities for that. Um, but we will be hard at work there. And then I will be here for the next two weeks and then I will be going on vacation uh, back to see my family and when we'll be helping out with uh, things as they come up while I'm away. And I think, I think that's really all I wanted to let you know, um, except for your homework. <laughs> um, I have an, just a packet here for each of you, and if you could just take one and pass it on. Um, I don't think any of these are, are anything different than what we've had discussions about, mm -hmm. but um, I have a chart here that kind of just discusses what what financial and uh, organizational stability will look like and what the factors are contributing to that that we'll discuss at the board retreat. We also have um, sort of the end of the year uh, reorganization, which looks exactly uh, as we've described in previous meetings and at the Board of Supervisors meetings within the scope of work. And then the last um, one I actually revised a little bit from yesterday so it would be easier to read. And uh, it has the three phases of our transition in very basic terms. This was included in the scope of work that we submitted back in January to the Board of Supervisors of Santa Cruz County. I believe the board also received that packet. Um, so I've just included it so that you can review it before the board retreat and really see what the three phases of this transition are gonna look like over the next year. So, thank you. Excuse thank me, you very Kathy. much. Uh, excuse me. Yes. Uh, will you be able to send this in uh, e-form as well? Would you like it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. 
Amanda actually could probably do that. She's got them. Great. Yeah, thank you. I'll send out to everybody. I will also, just uh, uh, one note, uh, Romney Dunbar and I did do a show here at CTV today, yeah. and um, it was a half an hour program. It will be edited, and we will have it up on the air within the next week, and we will send you out that link. And it's um, really just talking about some of the transition that we're going through here at CTV. We wanted to have an opportunity to talk to members of the community, to members of CTV, and also uh, be able to send it on to folks at the county and the city so that they would know that we're working with Romney to really develop this public-private partnership that they've asked us to create with him. So uh, we put together a show, and we have some examples of his work and a little bit of conversation about some of the funding realities that we're facing and why we're going to be needing some changes and really outline some of the changes that I've articulated here tonight to you as well. So I'll look forward to sharing that with the board. Many thanks to the staff who helped us with that today. Great. Thanks, Kathy. Thank you. Keith. Yes. Well, one thing, uh, when you get back from vacation, let's get together and maybe in September or uh, one of the meetings there, come to the Santa Cruz City Council and kind of sure. run through some of this so they understand what they're one of the partners in this. The county's the lead, but they're mm -hmm. a joint signature. And I haven't really said too much recently because I wanted to see how things flirt out, but it looks like it's still a point now where it would be good to have. So I'll just make a note and follow up and see what your schedule and Joe, is. Joe, just so you know, I'm also doing the Gilroy City, Hollister City, San Juan Batista, and the County Board of Supervisors for San Benito County all in September and October. Mm -hmm. So if, um, and they usually are on the same evening, so we might want to actually schedule that now so that we can get on my calendar. Okay, well before, after the meeting, we'll do that. Great. Okay. So the next item is the board member staff request for specific items to appear on the next regular meeting agenda. Um, I know of a couple of requests. There will be requests uh, from the, for the governor's committee to meet. There are going to be some new policies uh, for community television. I've discussed them some with Kathy, but they will be discussed in the governance committee meeting and that will be an agenda item on the September meeting. Uh, Paul McNabb has asked for a fund development committee to meet, I believe, August 29th. And there will be uh, items from that meeting on the agenda. Any other items that uh, board members or the public knows about should be on the agenda. For uh, probably maybe the next meeting, I um, would like to get it on the agenda as quick as possible. I had a discussion with, uh, with uh, somebody from the county at uh, General Services Department, and I think there's an opportunity, possibly an opportunity, for uh, bringing in some revenue. I'm not sure how much, uh, whether it's a big amount or small, but there are a lot of seized and uh, confiscated uh, properties that go through the county, and then they're outsourced, and they're, uh, I guess they're put online and sold out of the county. And my initial discussion was uh, with uh, a lady by the name of Blanche Bettinger, and she mentioned that uh, there's a possibility, at least they would explore uh, community TV, maybe doing some kind of um, uh, auction live on television that would generate some income. And uh, so I mentioned uh, Lynn's name and that he had been working with us for some time, and he still is uh, partnering, partnering with us in some fashion for a while, and uh, she knew him real well, and she said that uh, maybe the first step would be to get a letter from Community TV over to the county um, stating what our intentions were, certainly at the pleasure of this board, uh, that we might be uh, interested in engaging them, and they would look to the possibility of transferring those um, auctions over to maybe us doing them if in fact, it all fits really well. But certainly a letter over to the county uh, would be maybe the first step. And I uh, had a little conversation with Lynn, and, and he seemed what to think What kind of it, property is that? Uh, seized properties. Uh, they're confiscated. They're, some of them are vehicles and things like that, but there's a lot of bicycles and all kinds mm -hmm. of different things that they take in um, when, I guess, they do an arrest or something like that. Uh, there's all kinds of different things. <laughs> Seized so or unclaimed moment. property. Unclaimed. Yeah. Unclaimed. Yeah. Unclaimed. Now I would like to recommend that that go through. <laughs> I'd like to recommend that go through the fund development committee since that involves developing funds for community television, and that it come through them to the board. So note the August 29th meeting. So I'm on the committee. Great. You're on the committee. Okay. No idea that's, goes unpunished. That's, hey, that's a good. That's a good idea. <laughs> yes. Hadn't, thank you. Hadn't thought of that. I'm sure. I'm not. I'm not. Somebody uh, might you. spot their stolen bicycle and call us up. I'm coming to get my bike. Well, so. that's actually a public service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is. 
I assume that the, uh, the results of the uh, county board of supervisors meeting will be on the agenda too. Okay. Yeah. One thing I have a question on that, Lynn. It, would it be a good idea for a couple of us that we have time to go to the board meeting, or do you think that's necessary at this time? I, I suspect it'll be on the consent agenda, okay, fine. Um, but I can notify you as soon as I find out what the board agenda says. I'll okay. notify you right away. But okay. my understanding from talking with um, Kevin Bowling at ISD was it would just be a simple just consent okay. agenda item mm -hmm. since it's more clean up than anything else. Okay. Okay. Are there any other announcements? Okay. If we are through with all the agenda items, then I believe that we are ready to adjourn to close session. Before we do that, I would like to specifically thank all the volunteers that helped on this production. David Perez, Joel Froloff, Karen Scott, John Maurer, Alex Hubbard, and Sarah Mendoza. Thank you very much for helping. And we're going to So we will, we will go off the air and we will report out of session, but we will no longer be televised at that point. Thank you. Thank you.